The coagulation cascade is a series of biochemical reactions that occur in the body to stop bleeding by forming blood clots. It involves a complex interplay of various proteins known as clotting factors. The cascade is typically divided into two pathways, the intrinsic pathway and the extrinsic pathway, which converge at a common pathway to ultimately form a stable blood clot. The intrinsic pathway. The intrinsic pathway is initiated by damage inside the blood vessel itself, exposing collagen and activating platelets. The exposed collagen activates factor 12, or Hageman factor, which then activates several other steps of which activation of factor 10 is the last step. Here are some examples of factors that can damage the endothelium. High blood pressure, high levels of cholesterol or lipids in the blood, diabetes, smoking, certain medications or toxins. Also, certain hormones can potentially damage the endothelium. The extrinsic pathway. The extrinsic pathway is initiated by tissue damage outside of blood vessels. Tissue damage releases tissue factor, also known as factor 3, which then activates several other steps of which activation of factor 10 is the last step. Examples of causes that can trigger the extrinsic coagulation pathway include trauma or injury to tissues outside the blood vessel, surgical procedures, inflammatory conditions, Certain diseases or conditions affecting the vascular system, such as atherosclerosis or aneurysms. Both pathways can be activated independently, but they often work together to ensure efficient blood clotting. The goal of the common pathway is to form a stable blood clot. Activated factor 10, along with factor 5 and calcium ions, form the prothrombinase complex. The step where fibrinogen is transformed into fibrin is where the meshwork of the blood clot is formed. The clotting process is reinforced by the activation of factor 13, which stabilizes the fibrin mesh. Vitamin K is an essential nutrient that plays a crucial role in the coagulation cascade. It is required for the synthesis of several clotting factors in the liver, including factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. These clotting factors are produced in the liver in their inactive form. Vitamin K then modifies these proteins. Their modifications are necessary for the activation of these clotting factors during the clotting cascade. Without sufficient vitamin K, these clotting factors cannot be properly activated, leading to impaired blood clotting and an increased risk of bleeding disorders. This is why vitamin K deficiency can result in conditions such as hemorrhage or excessive bleeding. Let's dive a little deeper into the vitamin K cycle. Vitamin K is obtained through dietary sources, such as green leafy vegetables. In the liver, vitamin K is activated by the VKORC1 enzyme. The activated vitamin K is necessary in the activation of clotting factors, which are then released into the bloodstream, where they form blood clots, as we saw previously. This leaves us with inactivated vitamin K. The inactive form of vitamin K is then reactivated by VKORC1 and reused again. It's a cycle. The VKOR gene. Certain variations in the VKORC1 gene have been linked to reduced VKORC1 activity, meaning that the enzyme is less effective at recycling vitamin K back to its active form. As a result, individuals with this mutation may have lower levels of active vitamin K available for the synthesis of clotting factors, potentially leading to a decreased ability to form blood clots efficiently. Since variations in VACORC1 itself already affect clotting, careful consideration must be given to what dosage a patient should receive of medications that inhibit blood clotting. VACORC1 operates in close collaboration with CYP4F2. Make sure to watch that video too.